In this video, I'd like to talk about finding the area and perimeter on the coordinate plane. So essentially, we're going to start with some type of polygon, and we need to find either its perimeter or its area. And remember that perimeter is just the length around the outside of the shape. So if we can find these side lengths here and then just add them together, we can figure out the perimeter. And area, remember, is how much flat space an object takes up. So that's concerned with the inside of the shape. So if we want to find the area of some type of polygon, we will have to use various different techniques. This looks to be a composite shape, so it will be a little bit difficult. But if it was a square or rectangle, often we just need to find its length and its width and multiply to find the area. But this question is asking for the perimeter. So we're looking for the length around the outside of the shape. And to do this will require a little bit of work. Essentially, we need to find the lengths of each of these sides, and we are given a little bit of a hint. We're told that AD, this line segment, and BC, that these are equal. That's what these little dash marks mean. So that will save us some time, since we know, like I said, that AD is equal to BC but we do need to find three of the lengths here. And to do that, what we wanna do is break these down into triangles. If we want, we can use the distance formula, or we can just create triangles and then use the Pythagorean theorem. So either way you wanna approach it will definitely work. The distance formula is definitely valid for finding the lengths of these lines. Now, personally, I prefer to just make triangles and use the Pythagorean theorem since that's where the distance formula comes from anyways. So to make those right triangles, we're gonna draw vertical lines from the lower y value to the y value of this upper point, and then horizontal lines from the leftmost x value to the rightmost. That's not perfectly horizontal, but you can get a rough idea. And at this point, we just wanna count how long these are. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so that has length seven, and again, this is a right triangle, since these are perpendicular to each other. And this one is one, two, three, four, five, six. So to find the length of this line, let's call this line a letter. Let's say it is, well, let me use C sub one, since we usually use C for the Pythagorean theorem. And we'll set these equal to a and b. And remember, our Pythagorean theorem is just that a squared plus b squared is c squared for some right triangle where a and b are the legs and c is the hypotenuse. So setting up this relationship, we have that 6 squared plus 7 squared is equal to c sub 1 squared. And we can simplify this. This is 36 plus 49 is c1 squared. And if we add 30 to this, that brings us to 79. Adding six more brings us to 85. And to find C sub one, we will square root each side. So C sub one, this is just the square root of 85. And we could try to simplify this, but 85 is just a product of five and 17. And both of those are prime numbers and they don't have any perfect squares in that prime factorization. So we can't simplify this any further. Now let's find one of these side lengths. They're the same, but we need to find at least one of them. So let's call this C sub two, and we're gonna just draw triangles again. So we'll drop a vertical line and then a horizontal line, and they're gonna be at a right angle. So this length is one, two, three, four, and this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So to find C2, we're gonna set up another relationship of the side lengths using the Pythagorean theorem. So we get that four squared plus seven squared is C2 squared. So this is 16 plus 49 is C2 squared. And adding 10 brings us to 59 and six more brings us to 65. And to find C2, we're gonna square root both sides. So I'll just do that right now. 
So C2 is the square root of 65, which means that if we call this one over here, C4, that one also is the square root of 65, since we know those two line segments are equal. And from here, we just have one more to find. So let's call this one C3, and we'll make another right triangle here. And this has length three, and this one has length four. So you might recognize this one. This is a Pythagorean triple, the three, four, five right triangle. So if you don't remember that, just use the Pythagorean theorem. But this is the simplest right triangle where the side lengths are all whole numbers. So this is an important one to remember. And like I said, if you don't remember that one, I encourage you just use the Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to c sub 3 squared. And you get 9 plus 16, which is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So we found all the side lengths. So from here, we just want to add them together. So our perimeter of this quadrilateral, this four-sided shape, A, B, C, D, is just the sum of these. So C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4. And we know C1, that's the square root of 85. And we're going to add to that C2 and C4. Those are the same thing. So we're really just adding twice that. So twice the square root of 65. And then lastly, we're just going to add 5 to that, since that is C3. So this would actually be our final answer. If we want, we could find a decimal approximation. But this is the best way or the only way to write this as an exact answer. Since if we actually plug any of these square roots into the calculator, since they are irrational numbers, we would have to round at some point, And it would no longer be exactly right. So this expression, 5 plus the square root of 85 plus twice the square root of 65, this would be our final answer.